Hello, hello, I'm back. Yes, I am still operating off uh, my webcam. I do not have two cameras set up that are working. Blackmagic cameras, really good, very expensive, but don't work very well in hot weather. <laughs> I, I, um, I'm a bit frustrated by that. It's all char it's character creation today anyway, for those of you who are wondering. So if you're wondering what we're going to do, we're going to go through the process of building a character for ultra modern that's what i'm going to do you probably never heard of it but if you have great that's great news there's a poll going up thank you fred huber for being here um one of the one of the things you're going to discover i don't know if you can hear him but my neighbor is trying to learn to to play the uh the saxophone and he's not doing a very good job i, I don't know that he's got any instructions i don't think he's got any sort of uh i don't think he really knows what he's doing okay so you're probably going to hear that funny noise every once in a while it's like a foghorn there it is right now uh, if you can hear that I apologize I can't do anything about it my windows and doors are open you will need dice today people you will need dice so make sure you have some dice because I'm going to make you roll some dice we're going to build a character and for those of you who are familiar with 5e it'll be easy for you because this is based off the 5e core mechanics it's just a lot more different options that you've probably never seen before in a slightly different approach. Anyway, let's uh, let's get started, shall we? Before my neighbour um, turns me to mush. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Weller, and today I want to help you build a character for Ultra Modern Five. That's right. You don't know what I'm talking about. That's all right too, because I expected this. I've had this book for over almost over a year, as a result of the the OGL debacle, I talked to Chris Stais, who actually is responsible for this creation, and it's a huge book. I haven't done a review on it, and I'm still a bit terrified of that possibility. Um, I will get it done eventually, but we're going to build characters probably for the next three months. Everything to do with the sort of current day or science fiction, this is the sort of thing that you want. This is the, the type of um, character building that we do with this system. Uh, it is all, as I said, is based off uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5e, the core mechanics. The difference being that this game here, okay, this book is tailored for a different setting, not the Forgotten Realms, not Eberron. It's 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 tailored to your particular setting right now, like where you are sitting at this very moment in this particular world at this particular time. Uh, but or it could be anywhere else too. So that's that's always nice. So I thought it would be good to be able to use this as a, a way of sort of showcasing this system. And it's got 11 different classes. Please let me know if you can hear the wailing or noise from my neighbor, because that would be quite entertaining to, to see that that's going to be a major feature for today. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I'm going to keep my phone going. A, a tracking um, chat off my phone is not very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt you, get you to do some of the work, and then I'm going to start, start filling in stuff and getting things done, okay? Because there's a lot to get done in a very short space of time. Uh, and uh, that's that was the plan for today. I thought that was the, probably the smartest thing. Nobody does a good job with a musical instrument the first year. Well, yeah, he, you, normally you get better, but he's not getting better. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's let's start off with a name. So hashtag, what is the character's name? We always start with this. What is the character's name? And then we're going to go straight into getting you to roll some dice and make some decisions. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is going to get you to do the ability scores. Um, roll ability scores. Um, roll four d6. So you're going to give me all four numbers. When you roll those six-sided dice, you will need four, four. I say four six-sided dice. Roll four six-sided dice. I will drop the lowest number myself. Let me do the maths at my end, and uh, you can do the, the rest at your end. Mr. Millennial. <laughs> okay, all right. So this is, the, this is the character sheet that we're working with today. So I'll bring you over to here. This is our character sheet. And you'll notice that it, its layout is very much like D&D &D 5e. 
okay there are some slight differences but most of it is essentially the same uh, and you'll notice that even the to a large extent a lot of the skills are identical apart from there is computer use okay and demolitions and engineering and is there anything else that's different no that's about oh science we've got science i forgot that we have science we don't have arcana uh, well no we do have arcana if you want to do magic you can um, so so there are a few differences but essentially it is the same now, this is the book we are dealing with okay this is the book that i received and um, what we'll do it's going to work through very quick, quickly while you're rolling dice i'm going to fill in some details and then i'm going to do all the maths and uh and fill in the gaps uh, as we go so uh and we have chris here chris broskett hello chris how are you i'm going to need at least six sets of numbers by the way if you're wondering that will be important so my class is civilian and mr millennial <laughs> mr uh yeah i'm gonna have to take my glasses off I, I said I wouldn't do this, but I, I just haven't found a good way of dealing with the uh, the shift over, the transfer back and forth. So I'm going to take down some numbers and, and do some calculations. So we need one more set of numbers and we are almost ready to go. Now, <laughs> once you know what the final numbers are, I'm going to let you decide where you want to put things, okay? We, we might even decide to actually select our our birth which is our race for those of you who are wondering what the heck is what is birth when he talks about birth birth is race anyway starting with uh, fred huber has here a, a six a four a two and a two so we'll drop one of the twos add that together comes to 12. that's our first set of numbers oh my gosh pale rider have you just rolled in and rolled that have you have you have you is that true? It's a shame. It's a shame you left it last. <laughs> uh, you might be a bit. So Fred, you rolled so many fours there. How did you do that? So we got four fours. So we get rid of the one of the fours has got to go. We're only keeping three of the numbers, and that comes out at a a twelve as well. That's fine. And then our third set of numbers is from Chris. He got a one. A five, a five, and a five. Drop the lowest number, which is the one, and we keep the five, so we get three fives is 15. Cool. Next. I know what you're thinking. What's the deal, Fred, with something like a, a, a civilian? What's the best ability score to have? That's up to you. There are no requirements that you pick something specific. Uh, okay, Fred Huber. You have got a 5, a 5, a 2, and a 1. Get rid of the 1, that's the lowest number. So we get a 12. Two 5s and a 2 is 12. And then our last sets of numbers here are going to be... Um, Chris has got a 1, a 2, a 2, and a 5. Nice. Get rid of the 1, that's the lowest number. And uh, two twos are four, and at five is nine. So we've got a nine. And our last one, which will be from Chris as well. Cool, cool. Uh, that is one, two, three, and six. Okay. All right, Chris. Putting Chris in here. That's your, there's our player name for today. What is Ultra Modern 5? Ultra Modern 5 is basically designed for playing modern games or science fiction games using the 5e rule set. It is 413 pages, the, the main book. Uh, it's got pretty much everything that you need, building characters, playing the game, all that sort of stuff. It's all there. It's got a lot of equipment. Yes, you can play a mech if you want to play a mech. Yes, you can have vehicles and tanks and... Uh, spaceships and stuff like that okay that's it's all there so so that's what ultra modern five is and uh yes i thought building characters would be cool call it species call it races i don't really care <laughs> you know how i feel about these things anyway a one a two and a three so we get rid of the one that's the lowest number so two and three is five plus six is eleven okay so we've got some ability scores that i need to drop in here 
So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop them in in any order. I'm not going to worry about it just yet because I figure I figure some of you are going to be wanting to um, push things around a little bit and not too sure exactly how this all works. So I'm putting the big number there so you can see it. 12, 9, and 11. Now those aren't the final final numbers, people. Okay, that's not the final numbers. I'm just doing that just to get us started so you can see what we've got. Okay, so we now, now that we've got a class, we actually need to look at the class section. The class section is on page 58. So I'll go to 58, hopefully. There we go. And we want our civilian. If it was scrolled down, that would be nice. It's probably trying to catch up. This is a huge document. Righto, here we go. So this is our civilian. And uh, will require us to roll some dice to determine our hit points. The first thing I want to say about the civilian and hit points and how many hit points you get, the the standard method is you get a an eight sided dice as your civilian for your civilian level, okay? And then at first level it's your it's eight plus your constitution modifier, whatever that is. And then as you level up, it's going to be roll an eight sided dice or five if you're taking the average and add your constitution modifier. But there is a special option for a civilian. And basically, if I expand this, you might be able to read some of this information. I thought it would be at least useful so, so you could see. So for with a civilian here, you can reduce your hit dice to 1d6 to gain one hero talent. So hero talents are pretty, pretty powerful. Um, and you, it explains hero talents for this, um, the civilian class um, on the next page. Uh, consequently, your hit points gained at first level are reduced to a six, um, a six plus your constitution modifier, and your hit points at higher levels decrease. So it actually decreases to a six-sided dice, or four if you're taking the average, and then you would add your constitution modifier. Okay, It's the same sort of principle that you're used to, it's just slightly different. Um, now, a civilian is not Joe Average. Joe, Aver This is not a Joe Average character. Now, regardless of multiclassing or feats taken, your hit dice cannot be higher than a six-sided dice. If that's if you decide to take an extra talent. You get a talent when you start out. At level one, you're going to get a hero talent and two uh, luck dice to draw. But right now, not worrying about that, at this very second, what we want to do is deal with the, the, the concept of we can adjust how many hit points we want to have our civilian to have. Additionally, you can reduce your hit dice if you want to, when you're building your character from the very first time, to a four-sided dice. Okay, and you gain an additional hero talent. That means when you start out, instead of getting one hero talent, you get um, two additional hero talents. In total, you'll have three. Okay. Whereas if you have a six-sided dice for your hit points, then you will get one hero talent standard plus an extra one, which means a total of two. But you can reduce your hit point uh, um, dice if you want to. It's not required. It's up to you. Your hit points gained at the first level, if you decide to use a hit dice of a four, is going to be four plus your constitution modifier, and your hit points at higher levels decrease to a one, one d4 or four-sided dice, three if you're using average and again regardless of multi-classing and um, um, feats taken your hit dice cannot be higher than a d4 so you set that permanently so you have to make a decision about that gives you a lot of options okay so i thought i would at least uh, point that out right now otherwise i knew that there's going to be some problems and people get confused so we have a couple of things here that we need to make decisions around, but I'm what I want to do is I want to fill in some of the gaps because this is going to feel a little bit a little bit odd, considering that you've probably not come across this before. So hero talents. So we're going to put in some of our features. So hero talent, and we're going to get one hero talent, and we'll put that down. We'll select that shortly, and we also need to put in. A luck dice. Luck dice, because we're going to have luck dice. We're a civilian, so we get luck dice as well. Okay. Um, and we we'll get to draw two. We'll deal with that in a second. Proficiencies. So you get light armor as an armor proficiency. So proficiencies, light armor. 
light armor. And then your weapon proficiencies, what can weapons, all simple weapons. So anything that's a simple weapon. All simple weapons. Take all the talents. Well, eventually you'll you'll be able to get more talents. You get you get a lot more as you go. Yeah. He's not really a punching bag. Trust me. Um, the civilian seems like it's a, um, a throwaway class, but it's not. Saving throws. Select any two ability scores. So in other words, any two ability scores. So you could have two of them. It's going to be strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, um, charisma. You get to pick any one you like. There's none of this. It has to be within. It's going to be this or that. There's none of that. Uh, Chris is about you having options and uh, this isn't going to break the game. So hashtag pick two saving throws to have any of the six okay you can decide on any of those so you decide i'll put in my uh my uh prompt you decide what it is and uh and i'll keep going okay how you doing pale rider <laughs> oh dear anyway let's uh let's keep keep trussing along and um and we'll get this done back to our character sheet okay so we're going to pick whatever you guys decide it's going to be I i'll pick the one that comes up the most while i'm doing the rest of this so we also need to have uh skills so you'll notice here with a civilian you get to select four different skills doesn't say that you have to, it's not doesn't tell you what skills you could have you can have any four skills that you would like it doesn't matter okay your equipment you start out in terms of your equipment you get whatever equipment you get as part of your background but you also get three hundred um, dollars in gear so we're going to put down three hundred dollars right now um, and I think that is we're just going to list it as three hundred dollars just put three hundred there Okay, and then uh, what was the other thing? We're going to mark off four of these skills in a shortly, but I will tell you what the skills are. So the skills are, it looks to me we've got constitution and dexterity. So constitution, dexterity are our saving throws for this character. Those are the ones that we're going to have our proficiency bonus added to. Okay, so they, those are the ones that we'll be proficient with. So the skills... The skills that you can have are acrobatics, animal handling, arcana, athletics, computer use, deception, demolitions, if you want to blow stuff up, engineering, history, insight, uh, intimidation, investigation, medicine, nature, perception, performance, persuasion, religion, science, sleight of hand, stealth, survival. Okay, those are the things that you can have. So to make those choices, I'm going to put in a prompt again. <clears throat> Someone's already starting to look at some of the other options that go with the civilian. Interesting. So hashtag pick four skills. Okay. So I'll let you decide what skills you want to have. So we've got first off computers, demolitions. Yes, Chris, you can blow stuff up. <laughs> for those of you who are thinking are you kidding me i get to actually set explosives there are explosives detonators bombs you name it this game has got them this is a game where yes there will be guns there is power armor that's right i said it power armor you probably won't be able to wear it but but, but there is power armor okay um there is a special part of this too part of your skills you can reduce your skill proficiencies to only two and gain one hero talent if you want to. We're not going to do that, but that is an option. If you don't want to have four skills, you can drop off two of your skills and only have two proficient skills and you would get an extra hero talent if you wanted to do that. Okay, that is certainly an option. Okay, it looks to me like everybody has decided on the, the various skills they would like to have as proficiencies. So let's uh, let's put them in. 
So first off, we had, uh, where is it? Computers, demolitions. So computers, demolitions. We need two more. Um, survival, stealth, could be. Intimidation, demolition, computer, survival. So survival, fair enough. Intimidation. You want to go intimidation? We'll take intimidation over stealth. Stealth, we want intimidation, stealth. Uh, drop to computer and demolitions and take a talent. Nah, we won't do that. I'll do that some of the time. It's going to make it too complicated. I want to keep it simple. We'll do that some other day. Okay? I'll be back to this. Don't you worry. We'll do this all again next year for sure. Uh, <laughs> so we'll take stealth. So we've got four. Four skills. Done. So those are the things we're going to be proficient with. We haven't finalized our ability scores. There's a reason why I'm not doing that. Okay. All right. Next. So luck dice. What I need to do is I need to actually explain to you how the luck dice work, which means reading out a lot of stuff here. Okay. I'm going to apologize now because I don't usually like doing that sort of thing, but you have to make some choices as well. And I also need to read out the, the hero um, talents because there's a bunch of hero talents to pick from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the, the luck points. I'm probably going to do that last. And then I'm going to go, but I'll go through the, the hero talents first and, and read them out so you know what they are. So, uh, and then I'm going to give you some prompts so that you know what to do. Okay, here we go. Yes, yes, well, you can certainly, look, you get a lot of talents already. There's only so many talents in the game, but yes, if you go to level 20, you're probably going to get all the talents. So hashtag, um, pick a hero talent. I will read them out to you in a second. And uh, hashtag, pick the luck dice. And I'll explain that in a second. Uh, Kunchi245, hello, welcome. All right, let me read through these and then we'll see what people have voted on. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to come on forward. Okay. Uh, drink of water, clear my throat. Bring up the screen. And let's do this. Okay, let's go. Hero talents, here they are. You are a hero. You thought you were just a civilian, but you're not. Or at least, okay, you'd like to think you are. <laughs> and starting at first level, uh, and then every two levels after that, see the table for that class, you gain a hero talent from the list below. Uh, when reaching an archetype selection, you can decide to select a hero talent instead. I'll talk about archetypes some other time, probably not this year, but archetypes in this game are exactly the same for every class you get one at level level three level seven level 11 level 15 level 18 okay those are the things you get um, and of course you get your ability score improvements that you can select if you want to take those they are built in in exactly the same position as you're normally used to okay <clears throat> I'm not, I, I don't even think I should bother going over some of the other stuff here because you're, 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 you're probably not going to need to use, use this stuff. All right, here we go. So, unless otherwise stated, you can only select a hero talent once. So you can only select the same hero talent once. Okay. So, born lucky. If you discard more than three additional luck dice via uh, combining or returning one of your choices to your die supply. So... So you can discard more than three additional luck dice via, a com um, via combining or returning one of your choices to your die supply. I don't quite understand what that means, but... Mm. Okay, Bravery, bravely run away. When activating a speed die, you can also stand up from prone for free. So it doesn't cost you half your movement. You also have advantage on escaping from a grapple until the beginning of your next turn. So sidekick, I should have a comedy sidekick. Anytime you roll a natural one with any dice, including damage rolls, increase the value of the one, you, um, the one, uh, the one unused roll, what is it? the value of one unused rolled luck dice by one. 
maximum of six. So you can increase the value of one unused rolled luck dice by one. So in other words, you can push it up, okay? It doesn't have to be, even though you've rolled a one, you don't have to increase the one to a two. You could increase any of the dice that have been rolled. Uh, next, do I feel lucky? When activating a attack die, these are part of your luck dice. So you, I'll explain the attack die. When you, <clears throat> you can also make one additional attack as part of the same action. It does not benefit from the attack die. Okay, so in other words, you can't benefit from that attack die, but you get to make another attack. Do I feel lucky? Foolish fortune. After rolling your luck die after um, uh, initiative, uh, select one and set that die result to six. So you can actually get a dice roll of a six if you want to. Yes. Happy accidents. When adding matched dice from combined dice, increase the total result by three. Right, there you go. An increase of three to a dice roll is pretty good. Um, improving the odds. Immediate, immediately after rolling luck die, okay, or luck dice, after initiative, so you have to have rolled initiative, it can't be applied to the initiative, after rolling initiative, but any luck dice used after that, increase all wild die results by two. Okay, maximum of six on the result. Okay, it's all in the reflexes. Before making an ability check as part of the same action, take a random luck die from the supply and lock it on a player character's sheet. You have advantage on the next ability check. You can do, uh, you do not uh, regain that lo um, locked die until you finish a long rest. This is a very complicated rule set, um, Chris. Okay, Kismet. Increase your luck die pull by one. You can select this talent up to three times. So this is one talent that you can um, select more than once. Normally the other ones you can't. Luck of the um, whatever. After rolling luck die after initiative, so you have to have rolled initiative already, you can re-roll up to two and take the higher value. Uh, lucky star, increase your luck die draw by one. You can select this talent twice, so that's an, uh, obviously um, slightly outside of the, the norm. Normally you only get to get a talent once, but you can take this talent more than once if you want to. Make your own luck. You can spend a hit die as a bonus action to draw two additional luck die from your supply. If your supply is empty, you cannot use this ability. Select this talent a second time and increase the draw to three additional die or dice. Protagonist. When all allies, when an ally you can see suffers a critical hit or is reduced to zero hit points, recover a spent luck die of your choice, re-roll it immediately and add it back to your active dice. Okay. Stormtrooper aim. When activating a defense die, you, you are also counted as having taken the dodge action. Any attack rolls made against you have disadvantage until the start of your next turn. Stroke of luck. Any time you roll a natural 20, either an ability check or an attack roll, either return a spent um, luck die uh, to your supply or draw one luck die from the supply. We're all lucky. When activating a recovery die, one ally within five feet of you can also spend a hit die and recover that hit die's maximum value. The ally does not gain the benefit of the combined die. So that's how that works. Now avoidance is at level two. We're not going to level two. We're only going to level one today. Um, but avoidance basically means that you get a pretty decent bonus to your armor class. Um, if you're not wearing armor, you get a plus one bonus to your armor class. Plus two if you get to level six. Plus three if you get to level 10. Or plus four if you get to level 14. But you probably want to wear armor. You can wear light armor, so it would be probably more prudent to wear the armor. But if you've not got your armor on, it's going to be handy. And of course, the level 20 feature, basically, um, if <clears throat> starting at level 20, if you get to level 20, if you are reduced to zero hit points, but are then healed before taking a short uh, uh, before taking a short rest, return all the spent luck die to your supply and draw again. 
as if you just um, rolled initiative. Once you use the ability, you cannot use the, it again until the, you finish a long rest. So let's explain luck die, okay? Um, it's a bit complicated. I'm going to read through this very slowly. Um, I'm sure that you have already decided uh, on some of the different things you want to have. For those of you who are wondering what the heck is going on, Chris put in, when he made the civilian, he decided to make it uh, really customizable where you could just do pretty much anything under the sun with a dice. It's like the fighter, the battle master fighter taken to the extreme. Like, here we go. Luck, um, luck dice. Uh, Lady Luck is on your side. Starting at first level, you gain the ability to affect your success rate at a specific task based on the factors you should realistically not have control over. That's right. You acquire D6s of different color. Yours do not have to be these color, but whichever ones you use should be clearly identified and consistent. So in other words, just because the six-sided dice is saying it's going to be black, sorry, black, doesn't mean the actual physical dice need to be black. What it means is the color indicates uh, what it's doing, its function, okay? So for a black dice, it's defense. A white dice is speed. Green dice is recovery. Red dice is attack. And purple dice is wild, okay? <clears throat> uh, you will have the chance to acquire more and in different combinations of colors. Each color die is connected to a specific type of ability, which I've just covered. Okay. At first level, you gain a number of luck dice based on your highest ability score modifier. So in other words, whatever your ability modifier that is the highest, doesn't matter what it is, we'll sort that out, regardless, okay, which one it is, you're also going to um, add to it half your level, rounding up. Okay, so that's how many luck dice we get. For those of you who are wondering, luck dice, how many, okay, is the uh, modifier, okay, and then we're going to add half our level. That's how many luck dice we're going to get to play with. Right? Okay. <clears throat> and we haven't actually figured out how many we have, but we will we will do that very shortly. Uh, you must pro, um, uh, possess at least one of each die before selecting duplicates at level one. Um, up on reaching, okay, so upon reaching a new level, your total dice pool can increase based on the new level. And your highest ability score has improved. So if your ability score improves, you're going to get more luck, luck dice. If your level goes up, your luck dice increase. That's basically what it's saying. Whenever you gain additional luck dice, you can also swap out any previously selected dice. So you don't have to keep the ones that you had in the past. Okay. Even if it means removing your last die of a color. But these choices remain fixed until you gain a level again. So in other words, every time you gain a level, you can sh switch things out. Okay. For example, a character has a charisma of 17 at first level. Okay. And starts with four die because your modifier would be a plus three and your level one rounding up. So you get one to add to the three comes four dice. That's your, your, your starting pull. The player chooses one defense black dice, one attack red dice, one wild purple dice, and a recovery dice, which is green. At third level, the pull dice increases to five. The player replaces the green dice with a purple and adds a white dice. In other words, so you can switch things out. So you've, you've got some options. You're not locked in. If you find that there's certain dice that are going to be more useful later on, you can do that. <clears throat> After rolling initiative, place your luck dice in a cup or bag, um, referring to as your supply. This is your supply of your luck dice. Randomly remove a number of dice based on your level, okay? So two at first level and roll them. These are your available dice to spend, your active dice. And once spent, they are discarded and set aside, so you don't get to use them again. After finishing a short rest, return spent dice to your dice pool. So you need so to get your dice back, your, your luck dice back, you need to take a short rest to get them. Luck dice can be spent to activate their color 
or the dice can be discarded to use the value of the dice regardless of the dice color. Each color offers its own unique ability. In other words, basically, you can shuffle things around if you need to. Okay, die value. A dice value on its own, regardless of color, can be spent to modify any 20-sided dice roll, whether it be a skill or an attack roll. Okay, skill checks, attack rolls, doesn't matter. Check for success and then decide whether or not to spend the luck dice. So you can roll the dice, the 20-sided dice, for your skill check or your attack roll. And if you don't think it's going to be high enough, then you decide to spend your luck dice and roll your six-sided dice. You can do that. Combining dice. Dice can be combined to increase the effect of an ability. By <clears throat> spending multiple dice, uh, you can compound the effect of an activated luck ability. The value of the initial um, spent dice is not counted, but the values on additional um, dice do. So color match dice have their values and doubled. So if you have um, dice that are matching, then it's doubled, while unmatched dice are added unmodif unmodified. So you don't add them, unmod there's no modification. While dice have no act um, activ activation um, function, cannot be discarded on its own, but also act as a match dice for the purpose of this combined dice. I know this is a complicated system, people. I am very much aware. Okay, for example, if you discard an attack dice along with another attack dice, indicating three, okay, a recovery showing five with a wild dice showing two, you can add the three and the two uh, together which gives you um, five plus the two and the two comes to 15. That is so complicated. It's gonna take me ages to decipher this. Um, defense, let me go over at least the, the defense um, dice and the speed dice and what they do. And you can decide which dice you wanna have uh, very shortly. So defense dice, black dice. When discarding, when discarded as a reaction to an enemy attack, uh, an enemy a hit on you, that attack misses. So in other words, when discarding as a reaction to an enemy hits you, well, now it's now a miss, okay? They don't hit. Uh, combining, stumbled. When combining, the attack must make a constitution save equal to the value of um, plus eight or be knocked prone. So in other words, you're dealing with an eight as your, your, your marker. Speed, white dice. Discard... Discard is a bonus action, so you get rid of your speed dice for a bonus action, and you can take the disengage and move up to your speed, okay? You can disengage and move up to your speed as a bonus action. Now, if you combined it, which is bolted, when combined, the value rolled up to the nearest five is additional movement you can make this turn. So that's if you're using combined dice. Okay, next, recovery. Discard a green dice with a hit die as a bonus action and recover hit points equal to the hit die's maximum value. So you don't have to roll the hit die, you get the maximum value of a hit die. So what does that mean? Get rid of a green luck dice and take the maximum value of one of your hit dice, deduct the hit, um, the, the hit dice um, use off your, uh, off your character sheet and you get the maximum value. Now if you combined it, it's healing. When combined, the value is added is additional hit points you recover. So that's if you're using combined, combining with another dice. Okay, next, attack, which is the red dice. Discard as part of, so if you discard a red attack dice as part of an attack action to either turn a miss into a hit, so if you don't, if you miss the attack, you can make it hit, or you can turn a hit, if you hit, into a critical. So you can do quite a lot with this. Combined it, it now becomes a wound. Okay, when combined, this value is added to your damage roll for this attack. Now with the purple dice, the wild dice, this die can be discarded on its own and can only be discarded with another dice. Okay, in other words, you can use it in combination with your black dice, white dice, green dice or red dice, your defense dice, your speed dice, your recovery dice or your attack dice. Okay, however, the, its value is always doubled as if it were a matched dice. So you get to double the, the value of the purple dice. So there's some, there's some benefits to each of them, and you can see that the combinations and the things you could do with them 
are pretty significant. Okay, that's a lot of information to have thrown at you. I do apologize right now. So what now I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the chat and see what you decided in terms of what dice you would prefer to have uh, and, uh, and the, uh, the actual hero talent that you're going to take. So we're going to take one hero talent and it's um, born lucky. We'll take the born lucky talent. That's fine. Improving the odds. I oh, know, I oh, know. I do, do I feel lucky? Improving the odds. You want the improving the odds one instead. Stormtrooper aim. Laugh out loud. You like the stormtrooper aim idea. Okay. All right. Let's have a look here. Uh, just do I feel do I feel lucky? Stormtrooper aim. All right. Let's go with. Um, so we've got a couple of different um, choices. You like the idea of the purple dice? I don't blame you. Purple dice are pretty useful. <laughs> oh dear. All right, so Fred Huber's gone with Do I Feel Lucky? Improving the odds. Yes, you. there's a lot of dice stacking. The civilian is all about dice stacking. It's very much that, okay? Okay, Stormtrooper aim. We'll put in Stormtrooper aim. How's that? Stormtrooper aim, that is our talent, and I don't know if I can cut and paste. Um, I will, I will do that now. We we'll switch over. There we go. That's what I wanted to be. And uh, where is stormtrooper aim? And I will just cut this and paste it. If I can get away with it, I will. There's not that much in there right now, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. Plain text. Okay, so we've got that. Our luck dice. Uh, you've said purple, so I'll mark down you want purple dice. We have to determine how many purple dice we're going to get. And uh, we need to determine, probably making a note of what it is, is going to be a good idea too. So, um, so purple dice is the wild dice, so I'll mark it as purple is wild. All right. There we go, wild. Right, we, we've got some choices to make now. I've kind of left this uh, a little bit late because I knew I was going to have to cover a lot of information on the class. I do apologise it's taken so long, but uh, kind of necessary. So birth, what is birth? Birth is race or species or whatever the heck it is that you want to be. So hashtag, uh, not hashtag, 19, let's go to birth. Here is our birth. Now there's a lot of different options for birth. I'm not going to go over all the information on them. I'm just going to tell you what they are, and then you're going to pick what you want. Okay? That's, I think, probably the smartest way. Um, so aliens. These are the aliens you get. Uh, the, the, is it Hon? Codon? Codon. 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 So this is a bizarre looking creature here. The Codon. Okay? You get to increase your wisdom um, by two, and you select something else to increase by one. Um, it's got dark vision, a big cap, inherited knowledge, all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to go over that in a lot of detail because we need to do this fairly quickly. Uh, this is another strange creature. This is the Ki, is it Kehitten? Kehitten? It's kind of like an insect creature that you can be with multiple limbs. Um, you can boost up your intelligence and constitution by two. But you also get to increase something else by one. And uh, it's got dark vision, lots of speed, like 40 feet, languages, climbing, um, spider climb, exoskeleton, sustenance, acid spit, molt, molting. <laughs> so it's got all sorts of weird things. Uh, altered. Altered is basically, uh, think of being affected by radiation. Your DNA has been damaged or, or changed in some way. So you get, to, you get a lot of it. You can do anything pretty much with your ability scores. Put it wherever you like. Um, you have a walking speed that's pretty standard. You don't have a lot of languages, and you have a mutation of some kind. Okay, there are a couple of different mutations that you can have. One is aquatic. Um, you can have a carpus. You have arms, big nose, deformity, uh, chomp, chompers. Something if you want to chomp something up. Um, digi grade stuff, enhancements, fine hairs fragile iron 
nails, stuff like this. Keen eyes, keen hearing, large, uh, slow, um, and affect your legs, uh, metabolic um, uh, disease of some kind, uh, a simple um, deficiency of some kind, speed, increasing speed, a tail, um, you could be mute, uh, wicked tongue, some sort of tongue effect, uh, wings, quills, and it goes on and on and on. Okay, now we have what looks like a goat person, and it is called the anim animist. And with this one, okay, it's it's relatively um, simple. There's a couple of different ones, I believe. So there's a couple of different sub. There's one that's an ape. There's one that's a badger. I'm not going to go over all of them. So you can be an ape, a badger. Uh, you can be an elephant. You can be a bat. Um, humanoid, you can be a bear humanoid, a frog humanoid, a goat humanoid, a boar humanoid, a hawk, a crocodile, a horse humanoid, a shark humanoid, tiger, turtle, wolf, um, a, a possum, a rabbit, and a rat. So there's a lot of different things. An anima, um, automaton, automation, should I say, an auto automation is basically a robot, your construct. So you get a choice. If you want to be a robot, you can be a robot. Okay. So what does that look like? It's got it's got lots of different things going on here, and I believe um, there are some variants. So there's one that is the automation variant Android, and then there's the robot version. Okay. So you get to choose whichever one you want. There's also humans. So if you want to play a human, you can. Okay. It is definitely possible to do so. Um, there is genetic diversity, so this is supposed to be built into how you build it and create it. Uh, your ability scores, you can increase them as you, you can put them where you like. Okay, there's no real restrictions with that. Your ability scores each increase by one. So in other words, all of your ability scores increase by one. It's pretty standard. It's 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 the it's the standard sort of thing that you get from D and D already. All right, five E. Um, speed, pretty basic. Your language is pretty basic. You've got a genetic benefit of some kind. You have some shortcomings to include as well. Okay. Because uh, humans got shortcomings, don't they? All right. There's your human. Next, we have our morpher. So if you want to change and shift your form, you, you can change the cell structure of your life and your body. So you can morph into all sorts of things. This is your shapeshifter. There's a lot of gen different genetic benefits that are listed here as well. Uh, you can... You get constitution is going to go up, and your um, strength or dexterity will go up. So it's kind of fixed. You don't have to get. You don't get to move those around. Your speed is pretty um, standard. Um, your construction, your how you're constructed, composed, you can be adjusted um, to a little, a little bit, and you can transform. So you've got some some rules around transforming, and it explains to you what your transformation will do. There's a clay form. Okay, there's, a, there's a, um, a shield form, there's a weapon form, so you can change yourself into a weapon. You can just um, shape yourself into something quite grotesque if you wanted to. There are lots of different options along the way. Okay, a splicer. So if you want to splice, you're a spliced, you're, you're sort of a, a combination of other things. There's a lot of different um, species or races here. <laughs> there are species and then there's lots of races within those species okay so if you want to do this you put your ability scores uh, uh, ability score wherever you want it to be okay you don't get a lot but you do get something um, then after that depending on the splicing sub race that you select then you get another benefit to your ability scores your age is pretty much like humans um, your size is pretty much like a human your speed is pretty standard. Your languages are going to be common. And then your sub races give you all the other extra things. So you could be a bat, a bear, a beetle, a bee, a cat, uh, a chameleon, a viper, a dolphin, um, spliced with an eagle or a wolf or a wolverine, uh, a horse, a rabbit or a rat or a spider. Now you might be saying, well, hang on, this isn't this just like the last thing we talked about? No, this is a this is slightly different. There's a, there is there are differences here. Okay. Then we have the yoka yoki. Is that yoki? I think it's yoki yoki tuna tuna tuna. Natural capacities. So this one here it looks very human. It doesn't look like there's anything really crazy going on, but there's lots of different things that you can do. 
the key thing is you get a skill, okay, and uh, you get to pick a form. Um, <clears throat> and I think that was all of them. So now that I've shown you all of them, we'll see what would people decide that they would like to, to select. This will go, birth will go under race. Okay, that's, the, that's where we'll be putting it for today. So let's have a look and, uh, and see what people decided on. Hashtag, and if you haven't already decided on something, hashtag, uh, pick a birth or race or species. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? Um, the the so 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 I have to say there are some parts of this that are very complicated. The luck dice are very complicated. <laughs> the, the luck dice are very complicated. Tiger. So you want to be a tiger? I like the, the bug man. Forget the name. The bug, Okay, that's all right. I'll find the bug man. No problems. Let's go with bug man or tiger. Um, let's go with the tiger. What would I do without you, um, Fred? You're always there to, 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 to jump in when I, when I need you to jump in. So let's go find Mr. Bugman for you, the beetle one. Do, 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 do. Oh, I know what you're talking about with the, the multiple limbs that looks like a, uh, uh, what a, an ant keg or a, a tyrannid. I think that's the one you were talking about, right? Yes, I'm pretty sure that was the one that you were talking about. It's not this one, it's the, no, it's not you either. It's this, this thing here, this this horrible sucker. This is the one you're after. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so, Keaton. We're going to be a Keaton. Keaton. Keaton, 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 Keaton. Keaton, Keaton. Okay, that is our race. So now we need to do all of our uh, bits and pieces for that. So our ability scores, you're in your intelligence and constitution each increase by two select any other score now we're going to have to start dealing with this sort of stuff here but we will do that in a second um, how tall you are about six to eight feet tall you're a medium size I don't think we have a medium size we need to worry about that here uh, you have dark vision so we're going to give you some dark vision life events now is that under traits da, 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 da. I think that'll be under here life events Origin. I think that's origin. Uh, dark vision. Dark. Dark vision. And I think the dark vision is pretty standard. I don't think it's anything special. Is it dark vision to 60 feet? Yes, it is. Yep. Your speed. You have six legs. So you have a speed of 40. 40 feet. There we go. Done. Uh, next, languages. You have common as your language. So we'll put languages. Language. Whoops. Language, lang language, language. It doesn't look right. Language. Yes, it is. It is right. Okay, language is common. Common. Done. Next. Uh, mutations. There are no altered subraces. Okay. Instead, what follows are specific variation modifications that you can possess. Okay. Select up to two. You may also select a single drawback, which allows you to select a third mutation. So we're not going to worry about that. Okay. We're going to just going to go with selecting two mutations. Um, uh, you can also accept a plus one level adjustment to select two additional mutations. There are two tiers of power. Choosing the same one twice gains the second tier. Some are also listed with the third op um, option uh, feet indicated if you if you pick both tiers. You can also select this third ability as a feat later. Altered mutations cannot be changed after character creation. So once you pick them, you're stuck with them. At least not without out, uh, consulting your game master. Now, one of the things you'll notice with this system and what you're getting here is 
off first off i will say that um the the, the idea behind this oh, and it's altered so this is kitten here the, the 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 first thing that you'll notice is that there's a lot of options chris has made this very much with the idea that he wants the game master to have everything they need so you don't have to use everything in this book and it doesn't mean that the players would necessarily get access to absolutely everything like this it is very much a toolbox for players but mostly for game masters who want to heavily modify and homebrew their campaign that's why it's so complicated if you're wondering what the heck is going on so languages pops and clicks uh, you possess two additional languages but do not um, require your mouth to articulate you speak perfectly okay so clicks and pops so you have one language your own native language so we're going to go with uh, common our species language 10 and we get one more plus one okay so we will have to add another one a little bit later on okay that's that next spider climb you can climb difficult surfaces, including upside down on ceilings, without needing to make an ability check. You can also possess a climb speed of 20 feet. Uh, you never suffer disadvantage due to zero or um, due to zero, due to zero or microgravity. So zero gravity and microgravity will not put you at a dis disadvantage. So spider climb is our next one here, and. I might actually put this under here. I might put it down here. That's going to be a bit easier. Spider climb. Spider climb and we'll go um, climb speed. 20 feet. Okay. That's that. It's in. Okay, exoskeleton. Uh, you cannot wear traditional armor. You can either um, you can either be a heavy um, ketan or a light ketan. A light ketan has an armor class of 12 and can add its entire dexterity modifier to armor class. A heavy ketan has an armor class of 16 and cannot add its dexterity modifier to armor class. So exoskeleton is something we're going to have to to deal with we're going to have to decide what it is are you going to be light or are you going to be heavy okay and paste where is it paste yep it's K-H-I-T-I-N, I believe. Yep. Heavy, we're going heavy. Okay, heavy. So remember, with the heavy version, you're going to get an armor class of 16, but your dexterity modifier doesn't get added. So that's your armor class, 16. Alright, so 16 is your armor class right now. Good. Next, sustenance. The ketan is a silicon based a silicon based and devours inorganic material to survive. This includes metal, plastic, and carbides, uh, leading to people believing that um, ketans are in are in what's it? Actually sentient alien machine. Yeah, well <laughs> they're not a machine. Uh, the acidic saliva is employed to dissolve and devour these compounds as quickly as a caterpillar eats a leaf. So sustenance. We're just going to put down sustenance. And I'll put this here. Paste. Um, eat an organic. Um, stuff there we go done sustenance is in <laughs> we 
Well, again, like I said, the ability scores are not going to be locked in place. Acid spit, so you get to spit acid. As an action, you can eject a corrosive acid from your mouth with a range of 10 feet. If you hit the target, the target suffers 1d4 plus their, um, your dexterity or strength modifier acid damage and half that amount at the beginning of your next turn. So, we'll take our acid spit and do this. Copy. Uh, plain acid spit. And it is too much information, so we're going to drop it down. Acid spit, action. And uh, you have range is 10 feet. And we're going to go with One D four plus dexterity modifier acid damage, and that's that. Okay, so we've got we've got that in. I might just put a space in there, separate these so they're a little bit easy to see. Cool. All right, that's that one. Molting. So we'll deal with molting. Molting, 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 molting. So molting. Upon reaching a level granting an ability score improvement, that's level four, eight, twelve, sixteen, or nineteen. You must undergo molting to gain the level's benefits. Requiring you to spend an entire day, 24 hours, prepping <laughs> prepping, and another hour to emerge. After this, you lose your armor class for another full day. When this process is fully concluded, your armor class is restored and increases by one. That's right. If you decide to gain a feat, uh, you don't have to molt, but you also don't gain the AC or um, armor class improvement. If you select the feet but still molt, you gain the arm. So if you select the feet but still molt, you gain the armor class improvement, but not the ability score improvement. Um, if you select a, a ladder and molt, uh, you molt and ga and can select either the ability score. Look, so again, basically, there's a lot of you can you can fiddle with this a lot. Basically, molting is only going to apply when you get to an ability score improvement. That won't apply to us right now, but we'll put the feature in, because you're only level 1. So paste. Molt. Uh, when get ability score improvement. plus one AC. So your armor class goes up. But you've got to make sure that you take a bit of time. You've got to rest up. Let yourself adjust <laughs> as you make space. Okay, so that is the that is the very odd creature that we have selected, the Keaton. Now, your ability score improvements, your intelligence and constitution are going to increase by two. So, so int is plus two. Okay, your con is plus two. And select any other score and increase it by one. So in other words, we can't have um, anything. So your maximum charisma score at character, character level creation is 14 instead of 18. So you can't just push it all into charisma if you wanted to. Um, so one other thing, you get another plus one to something else. So this is where we're going to start making some decisions. I'm going to ask you where you want to put your ability scores. Okay. We have a 12, a 12, a 15, um, a 9, and an 11. So 12, 12, 15, 12, 9, 11. So let's switch over and let get you to make some decisions about where you want to put this. Here we go. Okay, uh, I don't know about that, Jasper. Jasper AK, I have no idea if you could ride a heavy um, kitten. It's not a kitten, but nice, nice, nice try. We're getting kittens and cats in here again, aren't we? <laughs> like the bug, it's an exoskeleton. Yes, exactly. 
Uh, the Traveller, good luck, man. This is this is a complicated system. I thought Pathfinder was complicated. This is much more complicated. So hashtag. Where do the ability scores go? Okay, and we have a 12. So hashtag. We have a 12, 12, another 12. And there's two, there's three of them. A 11, a 9, and there's a 15 in here as well. 15. All right, tell me where you would like to put those things, and we'll, we'll go from there. Fred thinks we should just leave everything where it is and make the adjustments. Okay. Even if we do leave them where they are, Fred, and people are happy for me to leave them where they currently are, there, there's, there's one other thing. We need to, you need to decide which ability score you're going to improve by plus one. Okay? you still got to decide which one you're going to increase by plus one. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay, I've got things floating into my office, which is always fun. Love it. Love that sort of thing. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, so if I promise traveler players are a fun build. Yeah, well, yeah, but you could die during character creation. <laughs> Any version of traveler. I don't think travel is likely to happen. I think it's very unlikely. I, I, I have an issue with a, a game where uh, you can die during character creation. I, th I think that's a bit much. <laughs> I think we leave that alone. Okay. So, uh, yes. So what do you want to do? Do I just put in these increases or are we shifting these ability scores around? I don't know if Chris is still here. I know we've, we're up to an hour now, just over an hour. Uh, I was hoping this would take a lot less time to do, but it's not happening that way. And dark vision. Did I put dark vision down the bottom here? I'll put it down here. Down the bottom. Dark vision, 60 feet. So uh, cut, and I'll put it down here. And here. Into this one. Um... feet you can't decide all right we're going with Fred anything look anything so if you want to increase so the increase itself for this thing right your, your intelligence and your constitution are going to go up by by two as it is okay uh, but you you select any other score to increase by one so you can increase strength dexterity um, uh, wisdom, charisma. Those can go up. Okay? So if we're not going to move those around, that's fine. Intelligence is going to go up it's from 12 to 14 now. And con is going to go from 15 to 17. I believe that's correct. So you want to, you want to increase strength? Strength. Okay. Even out the modifiers. Da, 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 12. Okay, so we can go strength or we can go um, dex. And it doesn't mean that dex is really not going to help us that much since we've got a heavy carpus. So we'll go 13 on strength. That's fine. Okay, there are our scores. So what I'm going to do is transfer those over to the bottom number. So we have a big number up. 12, 17, 14, 9, and 11. Okay, so 11 is in fact 0. Um, plus 0, I'll go that like that. Uh, wisdom of 9 is minus 1, I believe. A 14 is in plus two um 17 is a plus two isn't it plus two plus two plus plus three plus three so many different systems uh 12 is a plus one and a 13 is still a plus one there we go done okay so now that we've done that that sort of alleviates some of our problems we needed to find out how we're going to do this our biggest modifier is constitution, which is a three. 
So we take for our luck dice, how many luck dice do we actually get? Okay, well, in this case, it's going to be three, half our level. We can't halve a, um, a level one, so it's going to be four. We're going to get four. Four luck dice. Bracket. Four luck dice. Okay. Purple. So we need four different colors that you want to have. So you can have purple, but you need to have some other dice as well. You got it? Okay. Okay, all right. I am I am checking your, the, the chat to see what you guys are saying. It's, 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 it is happening. Um, but as I said before, we will still need to select some, some luck dice to go with this. Okay, otherwise it's not going to work. Now, if, if those of you who are here and are a bit new and you're not sure what the heck I'm talking about when I say luck dice, it's all right. I will go and show you what I'm talking about now. The civilian has a luck dice. And if we scroll on down here. Um, okay. So. Uh, black is for defense. White is for speed. Green is for recovery, which is like healing. Red is for attacking. Purple is for wild. Now we can't have duplicates right now. So we get four. So we need to pick some different, different ones. Do you want white, black, green, red, I need three more, because we've got a purple already, okay, so if you make a decision, then uh, then we, we'll, we'll do that, and I'll plop, put, plop them in there, and that's done, yeah, we have to have different colored dice to start with, you can have, you can't have all four being purple, yeah, they do, so they do have to be different to start off with. Once we get more than five luck dice, then you can start having duplicates. Okay, so hashtag, hashtag, different colored luck dice. Okay, need uh, more colors. Okay, so... So you went red, green, and black. That's fine. Done. We'll do that. I'll transfer those over. Red. Um, green. And white. Yes, we get a purple as well. You're gonna get you're gonna get purple as well. So, so for the red dice, it's that's the attack one. Okay, so if you're wondering what red is all about, that's for attack. Uh, attack. And go here. And then for green. Green is recovery. Right, recovery. Did I switch this over? No, I didn't. Sorry, people. Uh, green is recovery. Okay, and recovery, and then the the white is speed. So if you want to move faster, speed. They, each one gives you a different uh, effect when you use these dice. Okay, so we get four, and we've got four different colors. So once we get five luck dice, then we'll have all the colors. And then after we get more than five luck dice, then you can have duplicates of purple or red or green or white or whatever or black or whatever the heck you want okay so that's how it works i'm not going to put in the the luck dice system it is way too much information to drop into here <laughs> it'll, it'll drive everybody bananas it'll drive me bananas anyway we've done pretty well so far but we're not finished so we did the birth we did the class we don't have to worry about our archetype because that doesn't happen to level three so don't worry about that we do need to do our life. There's a section called life. So if I go and take you to life, which is this one, I think. Life here is your life path. Now, if you're wondering what the heck is life path, life path is your background. You still have a background in Ultra Modern 5, okay? I'm going to just tell you what they are and get you to decide on what you want to pick. I think that's probably the smartest way to go. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, I will show it to you in a second, but I'm just going to prompt that now. 
Yeah, eventually you can have four purple, but you would have to have nine, nine luck dice. When you get luck, nine luck dice, you can have one of every color, and then you can start multiply, uh, having duplicates of the purple. It probably does, but yeah, to start off with, you have to have one of each. Anyway, here we go. So, hashtag pick a life path for background. And that is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you that right now. Uh, life paths. Do, do, do. I'm going to just call them out affluent. If you want to be affluent, you get some skills. Deceptional persuasion. Okay, proficiency. Tall proficiency, one musical instrument. Languages, you get to pick two languages if you want two languages. You get your equipment, fine clothes and a bunch of money. Okay, um, you're a bruiser. If you're a bruiser, you get to pick either athletics or acrobatics. You get one language of your choice and you get a trophy from a fight. Okay, you get some money about $20 um, dollars and some common clothes. You could be um, a disciple, oh hang on, no, delinquent. You get uh, sleight of hand or deception. Thieves tools for your tool proficiency, one language, common clothes, and $15 that you've stolen. Well done. Uh, disciple, you get religion or nature as a, a skill. You get a language of your choice. You get equipment, holy symbol, um, and some a set of common clothes, okay? Uh, drifter, you get to select either deception or survival. You'll notice for the backgrounds there's only one skill, okay? Uh, two languages to choose from. Equipment is a set of common clothes, a backpack, bedroll, blanket, and five dollars in coins. Intellectual, uh, you get engineering or science as a skill. Uh, your languages will be either um, two languages to pick from, equipment, set of common clothes, handful of, uh, of textbooks, and $15 in your wallet. A laborer, if you started off as a laborer, this is the whole point. You'll notice the backgrounds or life path, they're not superpowers, people. They're not like what 5e is trying to do. You're not superpowered. This is just your, your, your origins. Um, so a laborer, so animal handling, athletics, tool proficiency, set of artisan tools, which makes much more sense. One language, a set of artisan tools, of course, probably related to the one you're proficient with, and $15 in well-earned money. Progeny, you get to have athletics or performance, one musical instrument or artisan um, toolkit. Uh, you get one language, you get one musical instrument or an artisan tool, a trophy, and $15. Recluse, there's a lot of um, origins here, by the way, or a lot of uh, life paths. Computer use or investigation, languages are going to be two languages to choose from, set of common clothes, personal um, computer, uh, $20 in uh, prepaid, um, um, prepaid cards, and $10. Okay, so you've got prepaid cards here. You know, it's like a credit card. Uh, regular Joe, if you start off as a regular Joe, you get to have one skill of your choice, one tool or vehicle proficiency, okay, one language, $50 in your wallet, you're all good to go, okay. Smooth talker, you get either persuasion or intimidation, one gaming tool, okay, one language, one gaming set, a set of fine clothes, $50 in your wallet, and uh, yeah, that'll, that'll do nicely. Um, now, there are also origins and I, I, I could go through Origins and, and, and do this if, I, if you wanted me to, but I'm not going to. Um, those are the different backgrounds that, that, that are available, okay? That doesn't stop you from making your own, okay? Even this game here, this system here, encourages you to do that sort of thing. You can pick from any of these Origins. Like, this, this, the, it just, it's just a, a great, huge list of things you can roll up you don't have to pick them you could just roll them up okay there's plenty of options here to do all of this now with the backgrounds or life path okay uh the the first thing you'll discover with this is at the very beginning i believe it explains how you can build your own life path the creation of them and it just refers you to the player's handbook the dungeons and dragons 5e rules but backgrounds follow the same formula they're really pretty much the same formula you don't get a lot 
okay? Same formula. So as a general rule, you're going to be getting one skill, a tool proficiency, one language, and some money and some clothes or some sort of equipment, okay? If you decide you don't want to worry about the skills, then maybe you'll have two languages instead of one language or two, two, two tool proficiencies rather than a skill. Or maybe, n almost nowhere do you see a time where there's two skills and no tool proficiency. That's, that would be the only thing I would say. It is built and intended for a game master to do what they need to do with it. For those of you who are wondering, okay? Alright, so let's have a look and see what you guys decided as, going, as, as the background for today. Uh, this NA for now, NA, doesn't apply. Um... We're not dealing with ladders because ladders don't apply till later on, I believe. We are level one. Alignment. Don't worry about that. I'm not going to worry about filling that in. Experience points. You've got no experience right now. Uh, we're going to do hit points in a second, which we will. But uh, yes. So what did you guys decide as a background out of the ones that you spotted? Abandoned egg, intellectual, Fred Hooper likes delinquent, Jace Jasper likes the delinquent, a delinquent intellectual, I spend my <laughs> uh, that a bruiser, Chris likes the bruiser, I'll tell you what, Chris, since I don't see your name in here that often, Chris, I'm going to, I'm going to select your bruiser, okay, we'll put bruiser down, so you're going to get bruiser, bruiser, there you go, you're a bruiser, and um, with our bruiser, let's go and have a look at our bruiser. What else do we get with a bruiser? So we get athletics or acrobatics. Did you decide, if we're going to go bruiser, did you decide whether you want athletics or acrobatics? You get one more uh, language of your choice, which I can transfer over right now. I'll do that. So we've got two additional languages to pick from. And on top of that, we also get some equipment. A trophy. That's part of our equipment. Trophy. Trophy. And I don't know what that trophy is. You decide. Uh, you get uh, $20, $20 in loose bills. Common clothes. We'll put the common clothes into our equipment. Common clothes. Athletics, okay. We don't already have athletics. So we will add that as a proficiency. There we go, done. Well done, cool. Uh, we've got another $20, so it's $320 to spend. And we're doing all right. Cool, I think that's that done. Um, Close bills, trophy from a fight, language. Uh, okay. All right, that looking that's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't want to. Uh, honestly, uh, we we should we should do an origin, but there's so many origins. I just don't want to go through all of them. Unless, what's an easy way of doing this? If we do origins, origins of your birth and so forth, how would we do this and make it easy? How would we do this? I will just read off and then I'll do I'll, I'll roll the dice actually is it a 20 tied dice for all of them 20 20 20 it is okay so we, we will do the origins so I'm going to tell you what the origins are you're going to pick the origin and you roll 20 sided of dice and tell me what that number is and that's the what, what I'll take how's that sound trophy box of human ears <laughs> god really human ears trophy There you go. Alright, so first origin can be parenting. The next one is status. The next one is um, casualty or sibling rivalry or separation or sibling viewpoint or surrogate or siblings or um, life episodes, um, tragedy, uh, if you want the tragedy one, uh, windfall. Oh, there's so many here keep going come enemy uh, we can roll under friendship we can roll under the cause who does what what can we throw um, what can be thrown um, 
forget about the I mean you can have the romance one if you want um, who ticked off who uh, new relationship previous relationship feelings issues misfortune so those are the different things we can so tell me which one you want roll a 20 sided dice tell me what you get okay I think that's the easiest easiest way for me to get the origins done because there's so many origin tables it's just a bunch of them we've got a lot of dice rolls going on here there's plenty of dice rolls here I just need to know which origin you wanted me to pick from there's there's a table for each one of them each table is a d20 um, dice roll so yeah I'm, I'm happy to take any of these dice rolls I just need to know which one you want do I need to go back through them again okay hashtag hashtag pick an origin pick an origin you pick an origin I put it in yet yeah, the dice rolls are no longer required I just need the origin <laughs> Okay, I, I called them all out very quickly. I know I'll go through them again if I have to. The eighth table. You want me to pick the eighth table? Oh, all right, Fred. The eighth table. I can go back and I've got to count all the tables again. Thanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, siblings. Siblings and our first dice roll was a 12. I'll oh, take, uh, yeah, take the 12. That's fine. 12 siblings. Is you have two siblings that's your origin <laughs> okay okay you have two siblings I will let you decide how to name them <laughs> that's not my problem I can't I got better things to do with my time so I'm not gonna put that in so that's that bit done well done so we've got our background life path whatever you want to call it that's down we've got our origin done uh, there's a lot of maths to be done as well I do need to get you to roll some dice because we need some hit points so let's do that now if I get you to roll a d8 I can figure that out hashtag hashtag roll a d8 for hit points all right, start rolling an eight-sided dice. Tell me what you get. So for anybody who was looking at the civilian, when I put the civilian up and it looked like a really boring class to play, I can assure you there's so many options. So many. Got an eight. Somebody rolled an eight, so fine. We'll take eight plus your constitution modifier. Maximum hit points is 11. Current is 11. Uh, that means that your hit dice is a d8 plus 3, your constitution modifier, and you get a total of just one of them. Okay, that's all filled in. No temporary hit points. We'll put zero for that. And uh, now I need to start transferring some information in from various places. Our proficiency bonus, just like any game, is going to be a plus two. All right, let's just put this in so you can see me put the numbers in. Um, inspiration. You haven't got any inspiration yet, so you've got zero. Oops. Zero inspiration. Do something impressive, and then you can have it. Have some. Plus one for our strength saving throw. Uh, our dexterity is plus one, and then add our proficiency bonus, since we are proficient. comes to a plus three. Constitution is a 3, plus 2 for it being proficient is a plus 5, so it's going to be very good. Intelligence is a plus 2. Wisdom is a minus 1. Well done. Whoops, minus 1, try that again. Minus 1. Charisma is a 0. Okay, we've got that. Next, let's do the, the various um, ability scores. Dexterity is a plus one, plus, no, no, plus one, plus one, it is plus one. Dexterity plus one, let's just go through all the dexterities so I don't screw this up, otherwise I will. Dexterity plus one, that is proficient, so we get to plus three. And sleight of hand is a plus one. Okay, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Okay, next one. 
strength strength we are plus one in that one as well yes plus one and it is proficient so it gets a three because they've got a proficiency of two uh strength 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 i think that's the only one for strength isn't it next constitution i don't know if there's anything for constitution in terms of skills because it's usually not used in that way it doesn't need to be intelligence there's a bunch of them so we go intelligence is plus two plus two on our arc arcana if you decide to start using magic computers we are proficient so two and then a two for proficiency which is a four bugs are very chari charismatic maybe this bug is not <laughs> maybe this bug now demolitions we are it's intelligence plus two and we're proficient so we get a four for that one uh next next intelligence intelligence we need to do a lot of twos in here you will notice that intelligence is a big skill whether you use it a lot it's going to be completely up to you and what you do in the game but it certainly plays a big part in uh, in this game okay our religion will be a plus two uh science is a plus two cool okay next one wisdom wisdom is a minus one minus one uh wisdom 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 minus one and keep going wisdom for medicine is minus one uh perception minus one uh da, 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 da. wisdom down the bottom here we are proficient in survival so minus one is going to get adding a two so that comes out as plus one okay that'll help and then the rest are all charisma which is zero so charisma's zero plus zero plus zero that's plus nine zero let's try that again did i put a nine in here somewhere no 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 i didn't uh, I just pressed the wrong button plus zero plus zero and okay that's all our skills done our passive perception so look at our perception which is a minus one ten so we get a nine for a passive perception it's not great well done it's all right we can live with that we'll survive uh life events i'm not gonna worry about that right now uh, we've done most of that stuff there we've got all of that stuff in there we need to buy some equipment and your gear and there's a lot of gear available and there's no way we're going to get through all the gear easily uh for me as as i said jasper i'm not really keen on a game where you can die before you've even started playing i, <clears throat> I wouldn't say it's hate but I, i'm not i'm not really keen on doing something like that myself anyway let's deal with equipment because that is the next thing we've got to get buy we've got some money so we can buy some stuff so our gear this is the gear section i hate to say it there's a lot of different things that we we can deal with right here okay <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot going on <clears throat> now you might have noticed and if it's not clear now if you have a look we can wear light armor as part of a civilian but there's no point if our armor class is 16 and it'll become pretty obvious in a second okay so <coughs> <coughs> okay so uh one-handed small arms these are you know, sort of uh small arms that you can use now i did it did he differentiate it because we're supposed to be only able to use simple weapons melee two-handed weapons blasters does he differentiate this i don't remember actually checking that okay super weapons that's not going to make any sense direct feed nuclear organic okay special weapons well that is confusing it's just a little bit bit weird all right, let me just cycle through there's a lot of different we the weaponry he puts so much weaponry in here it's not funny um power cost tech level uh tech level so what is classified as simple 
Is that tech level one? Oh, it's tech level zero. The wheel glides both. Uh, natural. Um, ground weapons. Simple weapons. Rear. Tech levels. Powers. Disruptors. Batteries. Heavy weapons. Small arms. Okay. All right. So there's there's a bunch of these things here. I I'm, I don't know if we're even going to be able to do this easily because um, the reality is, I think that the reality is, even if we try to do this and make it easy for ourselves, it's going to be a little, little difficult. <laughs> um, properties, melee weapons, super heavy weapons. So which ones from the weapons section are we able to take? He doesn't, I don't see the differentiation. Chris, is this, is this something you've left out? Does he differentiate between that? He doesn't seem to differentiate between that. Okay, well, let's keep our weaponry to one-handed small arms and two-handed small arms. And heavy weapons we'll leave alone. Okay, so let me just go through. I'm just going to call them out. If you can see it, we can do it. There is an air dart pistol. Assembly, assault, whatever the heck that is. Um, a... A brick action shot pistol, a capacitor plasma pistol, uh, there is a carpism spray, uh, caseless pistol, charge pistol, uh, a coil pistol, a dermorage, uh, electric shock gun, ESP pistol, grappling hook, high caliber auto loader. Light machine gun, low caliber auto loader, machine pistol, uh, necro tizer, a nuclear pellet pistol, one handed grenade launcher, plasma pistol, uh, pico postron, postron, the pocket pistol, revolver, rail pistol, restrainment field, uh, smart pistol. Solid laser pistol, S, the SPP pistol, thumper laser pistol. Now, all these weapons here don't mean you get to, if you, when you're playing the game with this character, you wouldn't have access to everything. He's just listed everything that you might use in the setting that you're running. I just want to make that clear, okay? It's not like a free-for-all. Oh, man, they get access to all these things. No, no, no. It depends on the setting that you're playing in, yeah? Now, two-handed small arms accelerator rifle uh, assault rifle basic sniper rifle a bolt rifle uh, caseless rifle uh, cyclotron rifle displacement device which is too expensive anyway disruptor enthor enth enthormatic rifle esp rifle field manipulator gauze repeater gravity gun which is way too expensive anyway uh, grappling hook um, grenade light weapon uh, grub gun bio iron rifle uh, kinetic flash rifle light coil gun uh, machine gun machine shotgun mine phaser nail gun <laughs> of course there is the nail gun um, nuclear pulse rifle plasma rifle rail gun shotgun machine gun ma Submachine gun, semi-automatic rifle, shift weapons, energy modulator, plasma repeater, shock blaster, electronic mortar, elect uh, electro volt modulator, uh, nano modulator for an assault rifle, um, combat shotgun, sl um, solid slug, sniper cannon, sniper cannon, yeah, okay, solid laser rifle, sonic fo fos sonic. Focus Rifle, Sonic Stunner, the SPP Rifle, the SPP Sonic uh, Sensor Gun, the SPP uh, Vortex, Thumper Laser Rifle, Ultra Sniper Rifle, uh, Vapor Rifle, X-Beam, the Xeno Savager. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Now, pick something out of that and I'll, 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 just, I'll grab something out of the chat in a second. Can I just make it clear... 
that the reason there is so many crazy weapons here and so many different types is because it's supposed to cover every potential campaign you might run. There's a reason for doing it that way, okay? And he gives you a lot of information on them. Uh, the other thing that you need to understand is that Chris is a crazy person and Chris decided to go and seek advice from an expert in arms, firearms, in reality. So there's a person on this list who's given him an advice on how everything should work <laughs> because they, they were part of the military. So he's got a military advisor who gave him advice on how all the firearms should work and how they would uh, and how they would operate the physics behind them, all that sort of stuff. Even with the stuff that is sci-fi like, even the sci-fi stuff, the military advisor has uh, has has put in his two cents. So so that is some crazy stuff. Okay, simple weapons. Here we go: brass knuckles, collapse collapsible baton, uh, fighting knife ban um, bayonet, a uh, plug bayonet. Okay, so. Those other weapons may not be things you can use, but you can have brass knuckles, collapsible baton, fighting knife bayonet, or a plug bayonet. <laughs> Don't worry about the um, the martial weapons. We'll go past this. Here we go. Demolitions. Well, there are some demolitions. I'm assuming they sit, they sit under uh, simple, but who knows? There's a whole bunch of grenades and explosives. Just come up with something. I'm not going to call them all out. There's too many. There's too many. There's so much gear here. Okay, armor. So, huh, we can only use light armor. But there's not much point because guess what? We can't add our dexterity, um, dexterity modifier to it anyway. And our, our armor class is so good as it is. So there's leather. There's ballistic um, armor. There's synthetic armor. That's all light armor. Advanced armor. Um, it's broken down into all sorts of things. Medium, heavy. I'm not going to go through all of them. But there's different types the whole gamut exists like if you if you're worried about the types of armor you might have access to don't worry about it it's all good you, you're going to have plenty of different options okay lots and lots of stuff okay all right let's uh let's see what you guys have put into chat and i'll see if i can find the weapon that you were looking um you suggested and uh and we'll we'll see if we get a firearm at least of some kind uh, uh, you won't know necessarily be proficient with it since you're only all simple weapons. The tech levels, I mean, the, the, this is the thing: is the tech level is what's going to determine it, and that's the game master making that decision, right? So, super. All right. So, okay, I think I'm up to the the single hand shot stuff. Right. Let's have a look and see what people put in here, and I'll grab one. And uh, we'll see if you've got enough money to afford it. That'll be interesting. Okay. Kinetic flesh gun. Yes. Look. He, the, the book is designed for you to do anything with it. So that's why there's so many different things there. Okay. That's why there's so many different weapons. Okay. Uh, da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Uh, Mon Goose did away with that. <laughs> did they? Uh, our mongoose chain traveler. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Now, now I'd be much more interested in mongoose's traveler if they they got rid of dying and character creation. There's no battle cat. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to deal with. You won't have enough. You've only got three hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> There's no way you're going to be. You're going to paint your your uh, your exoskeleton of your your bug. <laughs> a light sort a sort of light. Really. You need like a lightsaber, <laughs> needle gun, thumper taser pistol. Can we get a thumper taser pistol? It's too expensive. Is there anything here that you can afford? The the break action shot shot pistol you can afford that. You can afford the spray, which I think that nobody's going to want. Um, you can have a grappling hook if you want it. You can have a machine pistol. You could afford a machine pistol. That's three hundred. What did people suggest? Uh, Buck Rogers needle pistol for the win. Needle pistol. Is there a needle pistol in here? Uh, there probably was. Needle, 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 needle. Um, don't see it. Plasma. Machine pistol. Needle pistol. There's so many, so many different things. The air dart pistol. 
We can afford the air dart pistol. Okay, air dart. Let's go with the air dart. Where's the air dart? Air, air dart pistol. Yes, 150, you can. Air dart pistol, you can have the air dart pistol. Absolutely. Air dart pistol is a, is a, is a go. Let's put it in. Air dart pistol. Okay, so. Air dart pistol. And uh, with the air dart pistol, how much damage does it do? It does. It's got a range of 20, 20 feet to 100 feet. Light reload. Doesn't tell me how much. Oh, special. Oh, okay. It's special. I, don't, I won't even be able to do the maths for it then. Uh, but I can do the attack bonus. So we go uh, proficiency bonus plus dex. So that will be plus three, I believe. And the damage is special. I got it. Okay, what else does we have here? The machine pistol. I, th I think the machine pistol might be an option. That's 300. Yes, you can have the machine pistol. You could have the machine pistol as, a, as another option. Absolutely. Machine pistol it is. Fine, we'll make it machine pistol. We'll spend pretty much all our money and we can have ourselves a machine pistol. Okay. Machine pistol. Machine pistol and the damage. D4. And I think I've got that all done. Machine pistol. Okay. There we go. Machine pistol. Man. That was, uh, that was a lot of work. I'll tell you that now. So let me just show you what we have in terms of character sheet. Um, we've spent pretty much everything, by the way, if you're wondering. So I've filled in pretty much everything. You don't have to use the ladder system. You can use the ladder system if you want to use the ladder system. It is not required. He never intended the, um, the ladder system to be something you had to use. It's, it's just there if you wanted to use it. If you don't want to use it, then don't use it. Okay. Um, I would suggest you use the ladder system, but again. So this is the character sheet. Initiative will be our dex modifier. So that is a plus one. We've got that filled. And our resources, I won't worry about that. I'll just leave that, as, leave that alone. And we have $20 left. And we've got some language you still need to pick, but I'm not going to worry about doing that because it's just going to take too long and I need to get my ass moving. Uh, what I will do is I, I will at least um, point out some of the things that you might like to... Look, again, I, want to, I just want to reiterate that this is not a system that is intended to be used completely as is. It is something that a game master would select and pick what is going to be useful for them in their game. Okay, uh, so ladders, ladders here at 48, so page 48, so if we go here into ladders, and I'll just scroll on down a little bit, so ladders work this way, you decide if you want to use the ladder system, and the ladder system, okay, you select a ladder at level 1, if you want to do so, and what they do is each ladder is like a progression of feats or another word for it would be an archetype okay so you can have born leader as your archetype or ladder i guess you want to call it one or the other you could have juggernaut as as, as your option um, if you don't want to have juggernaut then uh, maybe you pick something like uh, the uh, what is it ladder gains performer if you want to be a performer then you would have a a ladder that relates around being a performer uh, if you don't like the idea of being a, a performer and you want something like a runner somebody who's more about running and being physical and so forth then you picked a runner and it has a series of things that you get at different levels the savant if you wanted to be um, a savant then you go with the savant uh, if you want to be a survivor then you use the survivor system uh, if you don't want to be a survivor you could be a veteran if you wanted to have that as your ladder that you're going to go through. Uh, if you don't want to have the, um, the that one, then maybe you pick something like the the warrior. 
There's quite a few of these. There's not a small number of them. Okay, ladders are just essentially another look at what the archetype might might represent. But what you'll find is ladders work a very specific way. Okay, they they are based on the fluff that you want with them. A bugonaut. All right, you can be an astronaut. You can be a bugonaut. Why not? We can put that in as your ladder. Let's go back. Oh, you mean juggernaut, bugonaut. I get it, juggernaut. So juggernaut, for a juggernaut, your key abilities would be constitution and strength. And your constitution and strength is very good, so it would work quite well with juggernaut. Okay? And your first level um, ladder would be this. This is the feature that you would get at level one. Beginning when you choose this ladder at first level, you can use strength in place of dexterity for all attacks and damage rolls with ranged and thrown weapons uh, when setting a save DC. Alternatively, when wielding a two-handed small, um, small arms, heavy weapons or super heavy weapons, you can use constitution in place of dexterity for all attacks and damage rolls. Select either constitution or strength as your primary juggernaut ability so that is the juggernaut so if we put that in and i will juggernaut you can pick that ladder <clears throat> and then there's a progression from there so that is that is how our uh, ultra modern works ultra modern is a very complicated process if you were thinking you were getting a very simple process, no. The, the idea is that this is supposed to cover anything that isn't to do with fantasy. Okay, If you're not playing in a fantasy world and you want to do something very different, then Ultra Modern 5 is designed so that it gives the dungeon master every tool they need to make it work. So that's why there seems to be so much going on and so why there's so much... Even the civilian, it looks really complicated. Okay, and the reason for it is it is not designed for a fantasy world necessarily. It's designed for a modern environment or a science fiction environment, which is a big ask to design for, for sure. There is a, there is a, ah, yes, so you wanted to know what about the sniper ladder. Okay, so the, the, there is a, I believe there is a sniper ladder that you can select. S, 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 uh, where is it? Runner. Uh, veteran sniper. There's a sniper class. We're going to do the sniper class separately. So there's no ladder. There's no sniper ladder. There is a sniper class, and then you would pick a ladder to go with your sniper. It would be a little bit different. Does that make sense? So juggernaut, buggernaut. Um, yeah, and you and what you do is you combine all those. Okay. Well, I'm going to end there, and I'm going to go to work because I'm going to have to close up the house. That was very complicated. I, I do apologize. I hope that I will get better at doing this. This has a lot of similarities to D&D &D 5e in terms of what you do, but there's a lot more going on. That's the only thing to consider. And there's a lot of cost customization. There's a lot of things you can change. It's not all the same, not even remotely the same. Okay. Um, and again, as I said, a lot of these options aren't supposed to be used wholesale. The game master is supposed to go through and say what you can use and what you can't for the world that you're in. Does that make sense? Anyway, it's a toolbox. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been with me today. I really do appreciate it. Sorry if I was not able to respond to everybody's um, comments, uh, but I'm doing my best to sort of track everything as I go. This is a much harder to do than any other character build I've ever come across. This is even harder than Star Wars Saga. I can say that right now. Okay. I want to say thank you to everybody who took part in the poll. Have you made a civilian character for Ultra Modern 5? No. 68%. I was expecting it to be something like 100%. Just watching 26%. Yes. 5%. Somebody has actually made a civilian character for Ultra Modern. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize that. That's great. Anyway. Thank you to all of my patrons. Thank you for those of you in the chat, those of you who have been taking part in the poll, watching and listening. I want to thank Jasper AK, Chris um, Broskett, uh, 
Huber, who is a patron. Without Fred Huber, a lot of my character um, live streams would just fall flat on their face and I'd get pretty much nowhere and nothing would happen because it's a, it's a bit of a shock to people's system when I say, uh, you're building the character, I'm filling in the gaps. <laughs> so wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. Oh, and Pale Rider. Almost forgot about Pale Rider. And uh, yes, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.